want to do is, you know, I told you I have a lot of question marks around here. I don't have a lot of answers, but I, I do think that this could be an interesting conversation. So I thought in just the last couple of minutes, just to sort of let's practice what it would be like to have Buddhists and geeks share more of our goals and our methods and our practices. Um, in our family, I think Kelly would be a little bit more of the Buddhist, and I would be definitely way more of the geek. That's me dressed up like one of my favorite video game characters, in case you're wondering. <laughs> Katamari Damacy, super awesome game. Um, so Kelly, would you come up and join me? And we've been having a lot of interesting conversations in the last month or so leading up to this. Um, do you want to, let's, let's, let's give them a little inside peek. Um, by the way, we were thinking about this idea of the, in every generation there are conservers and adapters um, that Jack shared with us this morning. And Kelly turned to me and said, that's what it is. I'm the conserver and you're the adapter. Uh, she also said to me over lunch that we're identical twins um, born six minutes apart. I'm younger. And she said, that's what it is. It's a generation gap. We had the whole generation gap. <laughs> So um, why don't you share some of the things that, that you were challenging me with and raising as questions? Well, the first thing I wanted to say is that, and this is the first time I've gotten to hear Jane's ideas uh, fully expressed relating now that she's been outed as a Buddhist. Uh, and so for the first time, I was thinking about this question of awakening as an epic win. And, uh, and I, I had to think back in my own practice, has there been a time in my practice where I felt like I was putting in effort in something that I had little faith that I would succeed at? Uh, but because a trusted teacher told me, hey, do this practice, I think this is going to help. And it, it reminded me of some practices that I began maybe 10 years ago in order to, um, to improve some difficult relationships and to think of these difficult relationships as benefactors and to do gratitude practices for these people and these relationships. And I hope I wasn't one of them. You, you were not. <laughs> I won't say if it's anyone we're related to, but... Um, <laughs> But, you know, it, it, I found that it was very much like the process you described of, of epic wins where uh, a, a trusted teacher told me to do this. I did it. It was difficult. It was uncomfortable. But I had some faith. Uh, and the end result, after some sustained effort, really transformed the relationships in a way that did feel like an epic win. Like, this was not the, the way the relationship evolved was something I did not think was possible. Um, That's cool. And so that, and that is my only epic win because even though we're supposed to have the same genes, she got both of the gaming genes. <laughs> so I've never had any game actual epic wins. Um, but so one of the things that we were talking about and was inspired very much by Ethan's talk this morning, you know, I, I'm fully on board with the idea that gaming can be a practice that supports a lot of really great qualities, positive qualities. But uh, more often than that, I hear people interested in turning uh, mind training into a game and that games might actually replace the, the mind training practices that are more traditional, including those that I teach. And I was thinking about uh, how the Dharma always goes along with the teacher and the Sangha. And when I look at games like this and some of the other games I've seen developed to support mind training, I see where the Sangha is. I see that there's a lot of social interaction. Uh, and so my, my first question to you is where's the teacher? In yeah. The games. Yeah. Um, this is something I've been trying to think of a good answer to um, because it's difficult. Um, in some ways, I think that the game designer is like the teacher um, in that uh, they are sort of prescribing a practice. Mm -hmm. When you sit down in front of the game, you're going to do what the game designer has asked you to do. Mm -hmm. um, so there is that sense of leading the student slash player um, through the activity. Um, and then there's also maybe the opportunity for other players mm -hmm. to become teachers. So to see games not as something ever that you play alone, but that it's something that somebody brings to you and leads you with. So for example, one of my favorite games is Portal. And uh, it's kind of challenging. By the way, if, if you guys are gamers and, and not gamers and you want to play a good game that will help you build up the gamer virtues, um, you can download a game called Portal for your computer and play it. You don't need special gaming equipment, so Portal. But Kiyosh played it first. Mm -hmm. My husband played it first, and he sat down next to me while I played, and like a very good teacher, he didn't tell me exactly how to do it, but was there to make sure I had support and guidance. And so maybe other players serve as teachers, or teachers serve as other players. Maybe something like that. Yeah. So I'm I'm glad that you said this idea of that you gamers are never playing alone because you know one of the things that we say is you shouldn't leave people alone with these practices. 
that and those of you who have a practice have probably had some really important instrumental support from teachers where when you, when you hit certain difficulties in your practice, it is so important to be able to articulate out loud what is going on in your mind, what is going on in your life, and to get some sort of guidance on that, to receive that personal guidance. And uh, it is true that, in, that on retreat or in teaching, sometimes the, uh, when a sangha comes together and shares what they're experiencing in their practice and in their life, sometimes in, in just hearing what other people are experiencing, even not mediated by the teacher, mm. uh, there, there can be a lot of support for the practice. Yeah, and that's something that gamers do. Gamers are prolific members of discussion forums where if you're stuck in a game, you go into the forum and people give you help. They create wikis to share their experiences and sort of build up collective knowledge about how to face these obstacles. Um, so it would be interesting to think about how those practices might support. Mm -hmm. You know, could you, could you support a Buddhist practice the way that gamers support each other? In these games. Now, one of the things that I found uh, intriguing that you suggested is that you could remove the teacher from a lot of settings and have some sort of technological platform that would serve the role of the teacher, and that you might have similar experiences or outcomes taking the human out of the student teacher interaction. Right, well, we were talking about a dance video game like Dance Central, where if you wanted to learn how to dance, I suggested that maybe you were too shy to go to a class or you were too anxious to go to a class and be seen dancing in public, which we could imagine potential Buddhist practitioners yes. don't want to be seen at a Buddhist you know, class yet or they're too scared to go. Um, but you play this dance game, it teaches you the moves, uh, inspires you, encourages you to do it um, as, a, as a sort of introduction. Mm -hmm. um, granted, the game is only so good at making sure you're doing it correctly. I mean, it knows if you're stepping at the right way or time, um, but it's not a skillful teacher. But it mm -hmm. might serve as like the baby step teacher so mm -hmm. that you feel the confidence to show up at a real mm -hmm. dance class or dance club later on mm -hmm. down the line to get the real wisdom, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because one of the things I was thinking about is how, and this is true for probably dance as well as for- We should be standing on the opposite side, and, Yeah, I know, way. I was thinking like, we should bridge this gap between gamers here and- uh, and, oh, also, I was just going to get us by our picture. <laughs> um, so, so we're uh, labeled correctly. <laughs> when, you know, when you are learning something from someone who is modeling that to you, and I think those of you who have had influential teachers in your life, uh, my guess is that you had the sense that you learned a lot through kind of a direct transmission of seeing how these teachers are in relationship to you and in relationship to others. And that's true in a dance class, too. A lot of the ways that we learn new movements, new ways of being in our bodies, is that we see it modeled, and seeing it modeled in real life mm -hmm. not only uh, activates mirror neurons, it makes it then easier to replicate that behavior, that skill, uh, but it also increases rapport and empathy and a sense of similarity with the person that we see modeling that. And uh, although there's more research on that with uh, physical movement, my guess is that is true with the things that we are training ourselves in, whether it's compassion or attention, uh, or other virtues, that when we see that modeled in a human being and in relationship to us, it, it not only makes it easier for us to find that new way of being in the world, but that it gives us a sense of being like that thing that we aspire to, which would create the kind of um, confidence that you were referring to that we need for, for um, persevering in the face of challenges. Right, so here's a field of research that I don't think anybody's working on yet, but if they are, it will be at Stanford, okay. which is do avatars ever create mirror neurons? Yeah. That, would be, that would be an open question. Um, but what I hear you say that I think is an important sort of takeaway is that there needs to be a role for a teacher, a face-to-face, Teacher. And not just because I don't want to be put out of a job. No, but because because <laughs> because the the practice is, is requires wisdom and it requires empathy and being in person can mm -hmm. really help. Um, and I'm totally on board with that because the kinds of games that I like to make involve physical location and uh, and co presence and shared. Well, that was awesome. Thank you. Uh, Kelly, my sister, for being my awesome <laughs> geeky counterpoint. Um, we've reached the end of the session. Um, if you're interested in uh, chatting about these ideas more, maybe thinking up a game for Buddhist Geeks 2012, that's my email address, that's my Twitter address. And um, I hope that these questions were intriguing for you. And if nothing else, um, I hope that you will play massively multiplayer thumb wrestling with your sangha and, uh, and, and try and uh, spread that a little bit more. Thank you. Yes.